So, uh, Pavlos, what are we looking at? Um, Sageify, uh, a tool that I, I open sourced uh, and makes it very easy to train, deploy, perform hyperparameter optimization on SageMaker, um, just using a few commands. Okay, pretty cool. So, what's the um, what's the elevator pitch for the demo? What are we uh, gonna run? So, we are going to uh, build a classifier on the Iris dataset. Okay. So no MNIST, thank you. No MNIST. <laughs> <laughs> Another boring data set. <laughs> um, and then uh, train it on the cloud on SageMaker and then deploy it as a RESTful endpoint on SageMaker as well. Uh, and we're going to do it in maybe 10 minutes. All right. Let's go. Yeah, the please. floor is yours. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Let's do this. I will just ask silly questions. <laughs> cool. Uh, let's have a quick look on the data set. It's called Iris data set. Uh, I'm pretty sure many of you already know that. Uh, it's about um, finding which class of iris flower uh, every sample is. Mm -hmm. uh, it consists of four attributes or four features. Okay. And it has three labels. Okay. So three types of flowers, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So um, you can see here the data set. Mm -hmm. So four features. Okay. And the label. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So you you're gonna learn about flowers too today. Exactly. <laughs> so um, the data set is on S3. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make it very realistic for real world. Uh, so most companies have their data on S3. Sure. So it's under Sageify demo, and here is the Iris okay. data. Okay. Just a text file, right? Just a text file. That exactly. That mm -hmm. Exactly. And then I'm going to GitHub and I'm going to create a new repository. All right. We're going to call it Sageify Demo. All right. Let's do README. Let's have an ignore for Python. That's it. Mm -hmm. Let's clone it. Cloning the repository, okay. getting into the repository, and then I, we need to create a, a virtual environment as well as in Python projects. Sure. I, usually, <laughs> I usually use con Anaconda. Mm -hmm. um, so it's Conda create And you could do this on a, on a notebook instance as well, right? Exactly. Because we have a Conda pre-installed if you... So it looks like I have already the, sure. um, the environment, but uh, I'll create it from scratch. Okay. Yeah, if you're not familiar with Conda, it's basically a, 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 a Python package manager and you can just simply create different environments. So let's say if you want to have a, a, a self-contained environment for, let's say, TensorFlow, you can build that, and if you want MXNet or another TensorFlow version, you can isolate your environments and avoid doing what I've done on countless occasions, which is work with a single Python environment and, and destroy it uh, because you upgrade a package that doesn't work and you break dependencies everywhere and you have to install everything from scratch. So, uh, you, know, you guys are smarter than me and you use Conda now, right? <laughs> exactly. So, I created the environment. We're going to yeah. activate it. Mm -hmm. Let's clean okay. our terminal. And then we have to install the dependencies. So, of course, we need to install Sageify. Sure. Um, Scikit-learn. Yep. Pandas. Usual stuff. Um, and AWS CLI. Did I forget anything? Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're good. Okay. Let's install them. And of course, here we're showing the steps, but you, you know, you would have your script to. Uh, exactly. You know, you could, you would have your script to to do all that stuff um, automatically, right? Right. 
Almost there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bodo Core, yeah, of course. Yeah. That's required. that's the actually yeah, that's actually the important one. <laughs> it's required for the AWS CLI. Yeah. Almost. Okay, this should be this should be done in a few seconds. Yeah. Right? Live demos. You're gonna see everything. Right? Cool. The Python environment is installed. So we're going to uh, run sageify dash dash help and see all the commands okay. here. So we see like build cloud where we can upload data using the cloud. You can we can train the model and we can deploy it on SageMaker. Okay. Uh, but first of all, we're gonna. That that looks simple enough. I mean, I, I could probably use this. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the first thing we need to do is sageify init. Okay. So essentially, we're creating a new project, okay. and it asks for the name of the project. So we're going to name it, of course, sageify demo. Mm -hmm. It's a new project. Okay. Uh, Python three, of course. Yes. And then it's really cool because it will ask you for all the AWS profiles that you have locally. I'm going to use the ML Hero profile. Okay, so these are AWS profiles defined in the AWS CLI config file, right? Exactly, okay. exactly. Right. In your home directory dot AWS slash config. Exactly. Okay, yeah, yeah, all right. Okay, so the point is you get your, the credentials that you need to get the job. Exactly. Okay. And right. you can change them whenever you want. Okay. Um, and then your uh, desirable uh, region name, mm -hmm. uh, US East 1, the default. Sure. And then you have to define where you have installed the um, the requirements. Okay. So it was the requirements.txt. Um, can we pause here? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because I forgot to. Yes, I, I just realized it. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So we have created the project. And then we are going to use PyCharm to just open and create the training and predict mm -hmm. logic. So okay. let's use PyCharm. So uh, we're going to open a new project, documents. Okay. Here we are. So. It has created a source directory. Mm -hmm. Under this, we have Sageify. And then we have, it has all this boilerplate code, like okay. the Docker file, everything that you need to essentially train your model on SageMaker. All right. And then you have to go to the train file. And if you scroll a bit. OK, zoom in a bit, because that's probably hard to read. Yeah, great. Thanks. You, there is a train function. OK. And then you have input data path. This is where your training data will live. Mm -hmm. This is where you're going to save your model. OK. This is optional if you have passed the hyperparameters through a JSON file. OK. And this is where you're going to save any failure. So you see here to do's. So essentially, you have to replace these to do's mm -hmm. with your modeling logic. OK. So let's do that. So first thing is that we're going to import pandas. Mm -hmm. And we're going to uh, read the um, training data. Okay. So data frame pd read csv. It was a csv. Sure. And then it's what we're doing here is we're concatenating the input data path. And then remember the iris data yes. file? It was called iris.data. Okay. Essentially, that is the full path to our training data. Okay. And then the next step is to say that there was no header. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no column names. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then the new column names, I'm just going to call them fit1 for feature1, okay. fit2, fit3, fit4. And then the last one, 
of course oops the last one is the label sure cool and then x is going to hold the features only mm -hmm. we need one more bracket y is going to hold only the labels okay and we do dot values to essentially get the uh, numpy array sure. okay almost done so then it's a good practice to train the data set into train and test data set so from scikit-learn dot model selection we import train test split. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one to know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also we are going, before we're going to the modeling side, let's split the data. I forgot that. <laughs> uh, so, so train test split, and we give the X, mm -hmm. Y, then it's the test size. Uh, so 30% of the data will be used as a test data set. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it's a good practice to use the random state. Yeah, to, uh, to avoid splitting in the same way all the time, yeah. Exactly. Mm. And then we're going to use support vector machines. It was a big thing 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah, it still works. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... So yeah. while Pavlos is doing that, so... Here we're, you know, we're kind of skipping steps in the sense that, um, of course, you would probably write and, and experiment this code in, uh, on Jupyter in a notebook, either locally or a notebook instance with a, uh, a fraction of the data set. Here it's obviously a very small data set, but imagine you have you know, 100 gigabytes of data. Maybe you would grab uh, one gigabyte, you know, write this code, make it work. Uh, and then train it on SageMaker to scale, right? So uh, if you're new to machine learning, we would actually probably write this code first, debug it, test it on a subset of the data set, and then once we're happy that it works, we want to train at full scale, and we would just integrate our working code into this, right? Exactly. That's probably what you do, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good. That's the process. <laughs> so these two lines, and we just trained an SVM, so simple. Okay, yeah, yeah, scikit-learn is, is brilliant. All the math is hidden. Mm -hmm. So then we are going to evaluate that. In okay. order to evaluate, so we have to essentially make predictions on the test data set. Okay. And compare two labels, of course. Exactly. Yep. So next test. And we're going to use the accuracy metric mm -hmm. for that region. So again, scikit-learn dot metrics yep. import accuracy score and then the accuracy equals accuracy score where we give as the y true mm -hmm. is the y test yeah and then our predictions that's perfect right yep i think everything is done and then the final bit is that we need to save the model yes uh, and it's course. a good practice to save also the accuracy mm -hmm. in another file okay like our report yes so from sklearn and externals, we import something called joblib mm -hmm. that will help us to serialize the model okay. and deserialize it later. So we need to construct the model path, which of course is going to be the concatenation of the model save path. Mm. Yeah, that's an important bit. And sometimes it confuses people who get started with uh, with SageMaker, you have to save the model in a very specific place. Okay, so SageMaker will actually tell you where to save it. And uh, so you have to use that path, which is local to your container. And then, and then at the end of the training job, once that code has saved the model locally to the container, SageMaker will actually take the model from that location and copy it to S3, right, in the, uh, in the S3 prefix that you define in your training job, okay? So a lot of people say, oh, my training job failed. Uh, the training job in itself probably worked, 
but you save the model in the wrong place. So SageMaker okay. doesn't find it, and of course it fails. Okay, so pay attention where you save the model. Okay, just a exactly. Hard, and it, here hard it's hard hidden. Lesson. You just need to yeah. save it somewhere that exactly. you don't know exactly what sure. is it. And then you do joblib dot dump. You pass in the classifier that is trained and the path okay. to save it. it. It's going to be saved in a file called model dot pkl. Mm -hmm. And then we need to save also the accuracy yep. in a file. So we're going to do it in a simple way. Again, we have to define the report path. Is again going to be in the same location where the model is saved. And we're going to call it report.txt. Okay, super simple. And then we open the report path and we want to be able to write there mm -hmm. as if f dot write we stringify the accuracy it's going to be a float and i think it's almost done we can we have the usual indentation problem in python <laughs> tabs or spaces <laughs> <laughs> we'd need a full conference on okay. that one it's reformatted okay all right. Cool. Perfect. Okay, so, so we're we're ready, right? Yeah, exactly. So loaded the data set, split it, uh, trained, support virtual machines, and scored, and saved the model and the score, pretty much. Exactly. Yep. That's it. Okay. Um, so let's go. And if you're not familiar with sklearn, uh, we had a session today on that. Okay. So uh, yeah. So I'm uh, looking at uh, Scalar and, and, and typical algo. So uh, go watch that one, and then you'll understand everything in there. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool stuff. Um, so then what we need to do is do Sageify build. Mm -hmm. So let me guess. Yeah, it's building the container based on the, the boilerplate code and the code we added, right? Exactly, okay. exactly. So it will take some minutes. So yeah, the Docker image is built. All right. Uh, so now we are ready to train the model on the cloud. Let's go. So it's really easy. It's Sageify, cloud, train. And then you have to specify where on S3 the data lives. Mm -hmm. So it's S3, Sageify, demo. That's it. OK. And then we have to specify where exactly to save the model. Okay. and the report.txt file. So it's going to be in the same bucket, but under output. All right. And then we have to specify the EC2 type. OK. And it's going to be, I don't know, just randomly chosen ML, M5, large. Probably it's too big for that task. OK. Do you support uh, spot instances? Uh, I think they're supported now. But oh, they uh, are. Oh, they are in SageMaker. Yeah. But does the tool allow for that? Uh, no, no, at okay, the moment. So pull yeah, request. Pull request. I'm waiting for that. Dash dash spot. Okay, or dash dash enable spot. All right, pull request, please. That would be really nice. <laughs> <laughs> it will save me a lot of money. <laughs> All right, here um, we go. That's it. So here it says no IAM role provided. It's okay. Uh, it uses the one that we used in the beginning, the ML hero. Mm -hmm. uh, but if, let's say, you have changed the profile, uh, you can pass in one here, sure. a different one. Okay. It's, a, it's a completely dynamic. Right. And we get the logs here, so it's starting the training job. So if we go to the AWS console, mm -hmm. and go to SageMaker, yeah, we should see the training job, right? And go to the training jobs. Hopefully. We see that there is one training job in okay. progress. Okay. And we see here that the training has been completed. Okay. And the, the logs in red essentially are the logs from our training logic. Okay. Okay. Um, so the training is successful. And we can see here the S3 location. Okay. All right. So no difference from using the SageMaker SDK here. I mean, we get the, the model artifact as a, a, a zipped uh, tar file. So, okay, if you exactly if you know and SageMaker, you know this. And then what we need to do is to go and deploy uh, that model as a RESTful endpoint. Okay. 
So it's really simple what you do, Sageify cloud deploy this time. Mm -hmm. And of course you have to specify the S3 model location. Okay. So S3 model location. Mm -hmm. Our favorite copy paste. Yes. And then we have to specify the EC2 sure. type. Let's use a small one, P2 medium. Okay. Then the number of instances, let's use one. Okay. And then we can give also a name to the endpoint. Mm -hmm. Let's call it my awesome endpoint. Yes, because it is. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. And that's it. Awesome. The endpoint is deployed. We can see that from the logs. Okay. So we can go quickly to the console and see, see my awesome endpoint. Yep. See? In service. Nice. Okay. Nothing happening yet, but yeah. all right. <laughs> cool. And then we could go to our favorite postman yep. and send the features. Okay. So now we, okay. We pretend we, you know, we drove somewhere and find an iris flower and, and we measured those four dimensions and we want to know. Exactly. And okay. see what type of iris is okay. it. Uh, Let's go. Okay. We're going to call the endpoint. And here you it's, are. It's I, a Citosa. Citosa. So simple. Okay, so, so yeah, HTTP posting to, to the endpoint. Exactly. Three commands right. and uh, you just train and deploy the model. And the good thing is that you can use anything you want. It's not tied to Cyclone. You can install TensorFlow, MXNet, sure. PyTorch. It's open to you. Okay, so to sum things up. So the, the typical workflow would be experiment, probably in Jupyter, come up with a, a working, a first working model, that you train maybe locally or on a notebook instance, you know, debug your code and everything else, then move the code, create your Sageify project, in just a couple of commands, uh, use that scaffolding code to uh, inject your own code, and then basically Sageify cloud train, cloud deploy. You can do local mode too if you want. Exactly. Okay. You can do Sageify local train and local deploy. Okay, so we can do, we could even work locally here. And it supports batch transform if you want as okay. well. All right, yeah. Um, and hyperparameter optimization. Okay, so yeah, you've got good coverage, right? So uh, if, you, if you find the SageMaker SDK that we've seen today is still a little too uh, uh, low level for you or too verbose or whatever, um, or if you just want to work with this great tool, then this is it, right? This couldn't be simpler, honestly, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. super simple CLI for SageMaker.